Welcome to Hospitality. My name is Stefan Zernecki of Black Tie Tours. With me, as always, Wesley Jones of Tour Cascadia and local artist Coleman Alexander Rogers. And, is he uh, really Coleman? No. No, it's just more fun to say no. that way. Uh, Wesley cool. is going to introduce our guest today. Because he's my friend. Yeah. Mr. Paul Loesch. Paul, you started working in restaurants at 13 in Pennsylvania? So, like, officially, my, my parents ran a snack bar. So that was my first uh, foray into food service was, like, a state park snack bar that they contracted for a few summers. Yeah. First, like, restaurant job was 15. Okay. Yeah. And then you joined the CIA. Well, I, I went to the Culinary Institute of America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tried the other CIA, but they wouldn't have me. <laughs> um, that, was that because of Anthony Bourdain, or did you just decide? I definitely that? read the book. Um, and for me, like, I grew up in a really small town in Pennsylvania, so... Um, there was like a few schools that were options. There was one in Pittsburgh, there was the CIA in New York, and then there was uh, Johnson and Wales in Providence were like the, the three at the time. Um, so yeah, I toured around, I looked at them. It was, it was really like the only option for like coming from a really small town with like limited work options to get the kind of experience I thought I needed to like keep going in the culinary world. Um, looking back on it, I probably could have skipped it, but you know, at the time <laughs> it seemed like the best option. Yeah, for sure. And then you bounced around, uh, did time in Manhattan, New Deep York, time. and then Colorado. <laughs> yeah, so I worked um, kind of like, like coast to coast at this point. So after culinary school, I went back to Pennsylvania for a little while. I actually worked at the same restaurant that I like, worked at in high school. Um, and then Colorado after that for uh, like three and a half years. And then to New York for three and a half years. And then to Portland, which has now been, it'll be... Almost 13 years. Yeah, 12 and a half years in the Portland oh. area. So, <clears throat> What convinced you to get into the restaurant world? What drew you um, to it? An uncle. Yeah, I had an uncle that was, like, super into into cooking. He was actually in the Air Force, um, but he was just always, like, on about how it was the, the, the coolest job being a chef and, like, be a chef. And, and then uh, so, like, looked into it. And then in eighth grade, I had to write a report on, like, you know, your career that you wanted to, to, to choose. And so that was the, the <laughs> career choice I wrote about, did the whole – paper and then just uh did you get a good grade apparently just like really really a man of conviction i just never let it go uh, <laughs> so, did you get a good grade on the paper um i mean probably i don't yeah, know you, i mean i was a pretty decent student you know it. yeah yeah i there remember doing all the research like and like shit. reading a ton of stuff and giving the footnotes and all that you know uh, so yeah yeah so i think i probably did all right that's good that's um good. yeah and then just i mean like i said kind of fell into the the snack bar thing because my parents were doing it and then yeah like actually pursued it from like my sophomore year of high school, I guess. Yeah. Well, hmm. Any no. memorable experiences in New York City or um, on your way across the country? Yeah, I mean, so many, so many, I guess. Like <laughs> uh, any you can talk about. Well, food service wise, or just like in general. I mean, mostly food service. Yeah. But, or um, in general. Well, in Manhattan, it's interesting. Like in New York, in general, I guess I kind of, and this is probably just like the nature of my personality. Was like I, I um, didn't do super well working for like any one person for very long. So mm. I worked a lot of short jobs and primarily openings. So I would like, I think I, mm. I think I worked at five or six places in New York that were like new opens. Mm. Oh my so like God. starting, starting before so the creation, process. doing the whole burnout yeah. thing for like six months, working really hard and then just like going somewhere else and doing it again. Yeah. Mm. Um, which I mean, it was, I think, I think good in the end for like having that experience of like helping to open places, obviously open places, Absolutely. obviously trying to do it for myself later. Um, but it's definitely, I think was like high burnout territory too. Yeah. It's like a lot of really long days at that point And a lot of like, you know, nothing is, there's no, all the systems are fluctuating. Everything is just up in the air all the time. It's like, it's just super controlled chaos, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I've worked in a ton of different kitchens. I mean, like everything from, like in Colorado, I was working at like a startup chain restaurant that wanted to be near like airports. So like part of the restaurant was in like an airplane, like a decommissioned airplane. You, know, you <laughs> sat like in the tube of it, you know. Okay. Um, and that was an interesting one because we were trying to build it for like expansion, you know. So it was yeah. like trying to get everything super dialed in. But just a really, that was a pretty odd like work environment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just all in all. In uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, just the it was Colorado <laughs> Springs too, which is just like an interesting clientele. It was like two thousand and. 2001 yeah mm. so. what's the vibe in colorado springs like well it's so it's an interesting place right there's like five military installations around mm -hmm. um including like norad um which is like the mountain you know it's like the place that's buried in the rockies that you know nobody's supposed to be able to get to 
Um, it's also where focus on the family is centered. So oh, it has, like, God, a pretty, like, Dobson. interesting, like, <laughs> Instrumental conservative to my childhood. band. But there's also, oh. like, some very, like, hippie-ish areas and the kind of progressive Colorado thing going on. Wow. So it's, it's like a clash of cultures. Yeah. yeah you know, and I think in the early 2000s, it was dealing with a lot of, uh, like, the same issues that a lot of the West was dealing with as far mm-hmm. as, like, drug problems and, you know, just, like, rapidly expanding and not really super managed well. So, um, yeah, the vibe there was kind of just, like, it was just, I mean, it's probably just like as suburban as you can imagine in a way, mm. you know, just very, very odd. Now, we're taking hospitality on the road the end of May yeah. to New York. Are you? Any, uh, I spent a little bit of time in New York growing up, but like any great tips for uh, something that we have to check out? I mean, honestly, I've been gone for so long, I don't know that I could like give you a great tip on something that, that is like currently. Post-COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, no, fair enough. Uh, like this one hole in the wall place know, is great. Like, f- like for me, I think it's... Uh, Anytime I go to explore like a city like that, I think um, having like a very light plan is good, you know. So you just do like a little research and find a couple of places, but then talk to like the bartenders, you sure. know, and the server and stuff, and be willing to like walk around a little bit, explore the trains, you know. Don't be don't be afraid to get to like an outer borough because a lot of the coolest stuff that's happening is probably not like right in Manhattan or right in like the heart of Brooklyn or something, you know. Sure. So hmm. I think being willing to just like explore a little bit. Bike so pack light. We're going to rent bikes. I like it. Um, How do you... Biking in New York is an experience. <laughs> only time, I want to do a bike tour of Brooklyn. Uh, that's my only goal. time I've ever yeah. been hit by a car on a bike was by no. a New York, a New York uh, policeman. Oh, like, shit. Like right outside of the uh, department. Yeah. <laughs> did, he get, did he get a ticket? <laughs> no, he just pulled out. I think I, think I was going so. the wrong way up a one-way street, you know? So it's just kind of one of those things where it was like, Landed on the hood, then popped up and was just like, he's like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. And just jumped on my bike and took off again. You know, oh, my God. I didn't, I didn't really want to you, you wouldn't even have to be working right now if you could have worked that uh, situation. Yeah, it wasn't right, like, it that wasn't was the that adrenaline dramatic, saying you were fine. Your brain would have been like, come on, okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, yeah, oh, my goodness. Out of there. You would have disappeared. So from, did you come from uh, Colorado to Portland? Or had you made a job back to the East Coast? Yeah, so okay. I moved to Colorado um, with my folks, actually. Met my... My now wife there, not too long after we moved, actually, and we were, like, together for a little while, and we broke up. She actually moved to New York, um, and so when I was in Colorado, it was, like, I, had these, I was even going to go to, like, Alaska and kind of, like, work on a boat and do that kind of thing. Not as, like, a crabber, but just, like, on a research vessel or something cooking, or, like, go east and kind of, like, refocus on the the restaurant career, mm-hmm. maybe chase the girl down, do that whole thing. Um, so it took, like, a seasonal job on Long Island for the first summer. Um, which imploded, and then I went back into the city and worked there for yeah the next mm. three years. So, and then uh, out to Portland. And then out to Portland. Yeah. So you're in Portland. Why in the hell would you come to Newburgh? Um, well, like I said earlier, like I, I grew up in a really small town. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, um, I'm like as I've gotten older. Like when I was younger, I couldn't wait to get out, and yeah. I was like, just get me like away from small town life. Um, but I think as I've gotten older, and as you're like trying to settle down, you think about like buying property and like having a family, all this stuff. I think. Uh, being closer to something I knew was more comfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's cheaper getting land and house. And yeah, exactly. I mean, it's cheaper. Center. It's, I mean, like, honestly, I, might, so I have a son now who's, who's seven at the time. Obviously, we didn't have him, but it, it's, like, coming true now where it's, like, and when I was seven, I lived in a small town, so you just, like, ran around and didn't, you know, you weren't confined to, like, a small yard with a fence. Mm. So yeah. I run out of ideas some days with the seven-year-old <laughs> yeah. where I'm, like, if we can't, like, really get out and go well, somewhere, you know? like very highly active He's pretty active, child. yeah, pretty strong, like, you know, likes to have a lot of like options of things to do you know so you sit him out in the backyard and like 15 minutes later he's like i'm done i'm bored i'm like God, this is like i don't actually blame you because the backyard is like not that super hustle <laughs> yeah. you know, for like one kid so yeah, right um so yeah it was like always the plan i mean since we opened ruddick um the plan has always been to move out this way mm-hmm. you know and for various reasons my wife holds down a like a nine to five type job you know she's a recruiter and is working like advertising and um you know, just more normal hour jobs. Yeah. Um, so it always made more sense for me to be like the commuter out than for her to have to, you know, really work in Portland and commute mm-hmm. in, yeah. you know. So for the people who don't know, tell us a little bit about Ruddick Wood. Ruddick Wood. Uh, so Ruddick Wood is a um, restaurant we opened in 2013, restaurant and bar. Um, I opened it with a business partner at the time. Um, I was the chef owner piece of it, and he was doing the front of the house piece of it. Um and we are still kicking, uh, yeah, seven and a half years later. It'll be eight years in November of this mm, year. That's big. Um, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. We we focus on, like, seasonal American fare, mm-hmm. you know, trying to keep it kind of as casual as possible, but still give, like, a refined 
kind of experience, you know? That's yeah. a good point, though, because you've got, you really have two sides of it. You've yeah. really, like, delineated. You've got the front of the house, which is a little more fine dining, a little more sit down, you know, yeah. uh, the menu is a little um, more refined or higher end. What do you want to call it? Prices are a little more, I think. Yeah. And yes. then the back of the house is. The tavern. Bar, it's the tavern, yeah, 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 and that was always kind of the goal. And, and for the, you know, right now it's honestly little, obviously a little different with COVID things and how we've had to adjust. But you know, for the longest time we operated it really as two distinct sides, where we had a different mm-hmm. menu for the front and we had a different menu for the back. Um, and we had added a patio, and that extended the kind of tavern service mm-hmm. piece of it. Um, right now we're doing the same menu throughout, just because of the limitations on seating and, and other limitations, honestly, just like staff and all the things. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think it, it provides that space like in the tavern where people just want to come in and have like a beer and some fries or like a burger, right. you know, can feel the super comfortable and casual mm-hmm. and like not necessarily feel like they, you know, have to like turn it up to go sit in the dining room. Even though our dining room is like, even though it's, you know, fancier, we've always tried to keep it still pretty casual. You know, it's like, it's, I mean, it's Oregon. It's kind of like every restaurant, like you can show up in shorts and go eat like a nice dinner and nobody yeah. really cares, yeah. you know, yeah. um, <laughs> as long as you still like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like it, right? So, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, I think it was, you know, I've come from like a bit of a fine dining background, so being able to still utilize that kind of like skill set is is nice, yep. you know. And I think, I think pr- trying to provide like a little bit more elevated type of service, you know, not mm-hmm. not super casual, is is good also. Now, one of the things we've talked about a couple of times on the <clears throat> podcast is the fact that um, you have made an effort to provide healthcare and an equitable wage to your staff. Yeah. And that comes with a little bit of a add-on to your bill at the end, but it's yep. denotated on your table. Tell me why that's important to you um, and sort of where the idea came from. Yeah, um, that's something I kind of brought up uh, probably like not long after we opened, honestly, is something that I think we actually probably had it written in the business plan that was like something we wanted to do. Um, and just just made it a goal to figure out how to do it, you know. And more, as we saw other restaurants kind of experimenting with it, and we were able to kind of see other models that worked and say, well, I think it's like we could do this now, you know, and, and try to make it work. Um, I mean, it's important, important as like a career restaurant person. Like it's – I think it should be a real career for people. And that means like being able to live on your pay from like one job, yeah. you know, and get health care and those kind of things and be able to like have a retirement if you want it, all those kind of things. Um, and it's just not – just not the norm for especially like small restaurants you know like independently owned restaurants it's usually not a thing um the hospitality industry chews people up and spits them out that's been like the norm right and then they go to somewhere else and they're like hey it's gonna be so much better here and then they get chewed up and spit out it's that six month burnout like that you mentioned earlier yeah Yeah. it's that i mean it's i mean there's really so many things that go into it right i mean as far as like um people like from the customer side of it people's just total disconnect from like what food actually costs Mm -hmm. you know when it's not just like slung across the counter at you in quick service fashion you know everybody's got so used to like eating fast and eating cheap that they forget that like an actual meal takes like time and money and resources and people to make it and all that stuff right and like none of that should be super cheap um yeah so it's like you know i would like to have an environment where people can like stay and have the opportunity to grow a little bit feel like comfortable in their working environment we try not to overwork folks either and like put them on you know 50 60 hour work weeks that kind of thing which is like also been the norm in the industry forever um yeah i just would like to see that become like what is regular and not Mm. be the anomaly you know Mm. we're still definitely like an anomaly and especially with the surcharge piece of it which is like we created our own monster with that one sort of you know people people love it or hate it you know um for sure um so we we hear a bit of both you know yeah for sure <laughs> i think that's really awesome man and I, I think that especially now in this time day and age with like the way colleges and everything like trades should be valued and a lot of the other trades do get amazing benefits you know like you look at like say a you know a carpenter working for a big company or whatever um it's just assumed that you would have you know good benefits with a job like that and yeah. plus really really good compensation <clears throat> so if you could if you could provide that kind of um, opportunity for people, then you're going to get really good talent that's going to hang around, and then you're going to end up with really good chefs in America that are going to, you know, change that's the a, culture. Here yeah, I think that's the goal for sure is to see it to see it spread and see more people like willing to take that chance. I mean, I think um, it was funny. I was just reading something about um, the guy from Seattle, Dan Price, who did the whole like he reduced his income and paid all of his employees more. Yeah. You know, his whole thing is like invest in your people, and I mean, I think it just makes a lot of sense, right? Like. I cannot do everything in the restaurant at all times, you know? So the goal is that people you can like trust at these positions. And right. I think part of that is just like treating them like, like 
decent human beings and as their employer yeah. that means like understanding that they need to be able to, to live you know yeah. and like yeah. enjoy yeah. themselves and well, you and know I'm always constantly thinking man how do I get out of this job how do I get how do I how do I what's my next step yeah or do I need to find a second job or a third job or like yeah. you know trying yeah. to like and that, honestly that has been a benefit too for for a lot of folks we can you know that we can get on full time it's you know, a lot before I can remember having to schedule people and you're scheduling around like two or three jobs sometimes, you know, so like even just that piece of it from like an administrative side of not having to worry about there you go. everybody's working two jobs, right. you know, so it's like right. what days are you available? You know, most people are a little more flexible. Um, you know, we also implemented temp tip sharing last year, like post the original closure, mm-hmm. COVID closure, um, which has added just a bit more stability for folks too, where they don't have these giant swings in their, in their pay because maybe they worked a, a slow shift and you know, somebody else got a busy one and that kind of thing. So it, yeah. it balances mm-hmm. out a bit. Mm-hmm. Now you mentioned the cost that it, the cost of preparing a really good meal. One of the things that your social media highlights really well is your connection to your farmers. Yeah. Um, one, it's fun to, to watch and kind of as, as people who typically are disconnected from the kitchen get to actually see the farmers. Yeah. Uh, they're not typically the ones that are celebrated when it comes to a great meal but I feel like you guys do a really good job of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, that's, I mean, like, probably my favorite, like, like it's the cliche thing, I think, for, like, Oregon chefs, right? It's, like, the best part about this part of the country is there are so many, like, good small farmers, and the the growing season here is ridiculous, and the, the ability to grow, like, really high-quality ingredients and, you know, raise really high-quality animals and stuff is just pretty amazing. Um, and I think, you know, like, as somebody from the kitchen, like, you draw a lot of inspiration from these people are just, like, you know, like, people say, think we work hard, like, those guys are working yeah. hard you know like i mean hard yeah. and again for like not enough money and it's just like a passion game right like none of those yeah. folks are <clears throat> there's some of them i guess but not, probably not i mean it's it's a long road to getting rich in that game you know um and so they're just they're just like in it for the love of going growing good produce or like raising good animals and that kind of thing you know so and we, i don't think our culture values that the, the, in the same way that they value the sexiness of what it looks like in the kitchen and top chef and all this stuff there's no like top farmer, but people don't realize that <clears throat> it's you can't show off those skills. But the amount of skill it takes, and the amount of like wisdom and knowledge that these people—I mean, you spend time with them, so you understand. But it's insane when you spend time with somebody who's a like career farmer. Oh yeah, right. They are they're Buckets brilliant, of knowledge. brilliant, but the most hardest working, most interesting people I think. It's like a it's like a blue collar genius, you know that that. <clears throat> dedicate their life to something that have, has like a ton of purpose for yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, it's hugely impactful, right? I mean, it, it should be anyways, you yeah. know, uh, I mean, I think providing for people and, and, and feeding them has a, you know, uh, especially from the farming side of it, I, you know, I can only imagine the kind of like impact that has on them every day, just knowing that that's right. what they're doing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I shouldn't say this guys, I mean, obviously we work with a ton of like killer women farmers as well, you know? So when I say guys, it's not, it shouldn't the be universal. Just, the universal. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, yeah. honestly, probably two of our favorite farmers are women led farms with even pool, Beth at even pool yeah. and then Kara at vibrant Valley yep. Yep. up on, on Savi, like just crush it. And they yep. just do so much cool stuff. Um, and you know, it's not only produce, you know, it's flowers or, you know, mm-hmm. vibrant Valley is doing indigo and doing all these cool projects with that. Like mm-hmm. just seeing people, like you say, get really passionate about something and just be so involved and so smart and so hardworking is, it's inspiring. It's like hard not to, like if you're around that kind of thing, you know, you don't want to be like just taking the easy way. Right. You know, right. <laughs> like right. it's just not. So well, and yeah. if you're watching, yeah. even poll, uh, has a station at the Mac, uh, farmer's market. So if you're watching, you want to go get some of that produce, go check them out there. Yeah, go support them. They're incredible. <laughs> Absolutely support your local farmers Yeah, all the time. Now, something else that Ruddick's really good about and something that I, notice because I pay attention is <laughs> that when there is a need in the community uh, you guys have shown up multiple times the one that's most memorable for me is is because Reddick or Reddick and Renegade joined up yeah uh, during the the big forest fires this last season yeah um, why is it important to to you to your crew uh, I know why it's important to Nick and I yeah we're, we're deeply oriented in our community but for you to kind of sideline operations and put as much of the logistical work into it that, that you did, uh, I mean, it took a, a ton of time. I got to watch it. Why is <laughs> why is that important? Why do you do that when when other uh, folks may s- skip over it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think sometimes it's like, well, the situation with the fires was just seeing 
seeing an obvious need, right? And just saying, well, this is something that we can do to be to be helpful, right. you know? Um, and especially once the fires got so close that it was actually within Newburgh, right? And there are people right. that are customers of ours and, and guests that come in that are being affected by this, you know? And, and just saying, well, you know, we obviously aren't firefighters. We're not going to be out there, <laughs> right. like, doing that that piece of the and work, And I certainly you know? can't take care of your horse. And, but... you know, and it's like, yeah, we and it's like we can't, you know, we're not going to be we're not necessarily going to be operating because right. people aren't traveling, all that kind of stuff, you know? It's like, so we need to be, kind of need to be doing something and, you know, we have products to use and we've got people that, that want to do something, yeah. you know? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just trying to put it to, put it to good use. And I think the fires are obviously like the most ex- extreme example right. of that, you know, right. where it did, you know, it started off as like, honestly, like I think it was a simple text. I think I texted Cody and Nick both. Right. And I was like, hey, you guys want to send some food, people? And it was like, yeah, cool. And it was like, you know, maybe we'll feed like 50 people. And then, like, two days later, it was, like, 800 people, you know? And it was, like, this. it just went so quick, right? you know? Um, What's cool is it started as a mutual aid project. It started as neighbors taking care of neighbors. Absolutely, yeah. Um, people and donated even, money directly saw, to us. Yeah, like, yeah, money and produce from their gardens. Um, yeah. We had meat that was donated. Yeah. Uh, and then World... Why am I World Central Kitchen. World Central Kitchen came in. Yeah. And, and kind of helped out with some of the burden later on when the meals started becoming pretty large like the number of meals what was the total number of meals that we put out do you remember um i'd have to pull it up i mean it was like a little over 2000 i, th- yeah. I want to say or like a bit maybe close to 2500 in that yeah. in that neighborhood mm. you know and a lot of that was like honestly over probably two days yeah where there was two days where it was we were sending food like yeah. to malala and just all over the place yeah you know and then it, it's kind of ramped back really quickly as well but um yeah, I mean, it was, like, super inspiring to just see that kind of support from the community, yeah. you know, because like, you go into it thinking, well, maybe we can make this work, you know, right. like, we'll, we'll try and we'll see what happens and maybe we'll just get, like, a few donations and it's, like, really not going to be something we can continue unless we're just, like, coming out of pocket for all of it, right. which is tricky in a COVID year, obviously, you know, <laughs> um, and trying to figure it out. But just, like, the amount of people who kind of right. stepped up from just straight when donations cool. and volunteering time and, like, all the all this stuff, you the, know, was The time amazing. was really cool, yeah. too, because we were uh, in a couple of the different school kitchens, Uh, because obviously they weren't having in in in-person classes um and we put out um a volunteer list and there was folks from all over the community that like normally wouldn't hang out together so you're seeing folks that are from all age demographics uh socioeconomic backgrounds that all just showed up because there was a need yeah it was it was pretty cool to be a part of yeah yeah and i think that's like i mean one of those things we we would hope to kind of bring back to and like with ruddick and like you know our experience and we've said this from the beginning i think is like having it be like a community like gathering place you know and i think that you know obviously there are going to be people across a broad spectrum like you said of of classes and political beliefs and all these things that are in the community right and um and i think it's better to have a place where you can kind of allow some of that to meld and mingle you know in a in a, in a form that's not um you know it's it's it shouldn't be like combative or, or right you know um like a negative interaction all the time, you know? Yeah. So it's good for folks to, yeah, to interact with people that are not exactly like them all the time. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, grab a beer, break some bread, and Jesus, uh, have a Jesus, true words have never been said <laughs> on this show. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I think everyone in the country <laughs> could, could probably listen to that. So, yeah. so how, how are you balancing restaurant, family life, and love of adventure? <laughs> I'm asking uh, this yeah. personally because I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I... Um, I don't know, either really well or probably really poorly. I think you depending on who you ask, you know, which one of those things people want to see the focus of. Um, I, th- I mean, good right now. It's like, honestly, it's, I don't want to say it's nice with the kind of COVID limitations, but being able to be operating right now on a limited schedule is definitely helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, my wife still works full time and she works full time from home. And we have a seven year old who's up until recently was not in school every day or even close every day was just completely out right so i was pretty much handling all the distance learning stuff and then um you know trying to also juggle restaurant stuff and try to have a you know personal life of like trying to get outside and i like to climb and climb mountains a little bit uh you know so definitely it's been a little bit of a challenge you know Mm -hmm. um but luckily i have like a pretty good group of friends i can get outside with you know which is which is helpful my wife is ridiculously uh you know understanding of like need for space and all these different things going on you know and it's also really good at juggling a lot of things you know so um obviously that's a huge piece Mm -hmm. of the puzzle if not the biggest piece of the puzzle Mm -hmm. you know helps hold it all together um so i think i mean honestly like it's 
especially as a business owner, it's being able to like rely around the, on the people around you and mm-hmm. develop that trust where, you know, I can remember like the first time I ever left the restaurant for, for more than a phone call away when I just knew I couldn't get a phone call and be there in like a reasonable amount of time. You know, it was like, I wasn't just in Bend or something. I was in Las Vegas and I had to get on a plane to get home, all this stuff, you know, and it was like, and it's funny thing was, cause like the very first night I was there, I got sent a picture at like two in the morning of a fireman inside of Reddick, oh, you know, and so God. it was like literally my first time away, somebody turned a fan off and left like a smoldering bucket and it just filled full of smoke, you know? So like oh my, my, my worst nightmare like came true, but it actually wasn't that bad in the end. So it was probably a good learning lesson where it's like, well, you just gotta let go, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. what are you going to do? Like maybe just burn to the ground. I don't even know. I woke up in the morning, looked at my phone and was like, well, hopefully it's still standing. You yeah, know? Well, that's <laughs> so, we have paid for insurance. This yeah. Month, right? But you know, so you, you just. I think you, I start to learn, live by that adage of, like, no news is good news, yeah. you know, so I can get away. And if nobody's, like, blowing up my phone, then it's all Well, at this point, you have so. a killer staff. Like, I have to give major props to your crew. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely great staff. And I think we've been really lucky over the years to have a lot of good people come through. I mean, it's still a restaurant industry, so we have people coming and going, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> despite all we try to do is for paying and well, I got things. It's just like... You just circulate pirates every once in well, a while. Well, each one's so unique, right? And that's what we always talk about. Like, you could find somebody who will probably tell you, like, Reddick has been their favorite work experience, and you'll find somebody that will tell you it was not awesome, you know? Um, which is fair, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's just every place has its own feel and its own way of doing things and it's not for every person you mm-hmm. know um and i've been lucky to be able to find people that like gel with what we're trying to do um and you know really take ownership of it i think in that way you know mm-hmm. which is important i mean that folks really feel like they have a say in things and like yeah. are able to have, like make decisions and don't necessarily have to come like to me for every right. everything you right. know you um, give them some autonomy yeah but, like you know obviously nick from front of house has been yeah. with me for a couple of years awesome um sit in the kitchen amazing holding yeah. things together Cody, who you're like stealing from me, kind I'm of. Trying. But you know, he's been great for a lot oh. of years. <laughs> and I also got Nick. I'm sorry about that. I'm yeah, not, uh, he was know. always a wild one. We knew yeah. he was yeah. going. So yeah. is Cody. Though, he's so a wild fine. cat. <laughs> he was just in tonight, so I still, yeah, we still see him all the time. I just saw him and him and the family just a yeah. little bit ago. Okay, so. so if you're Chef Idol, whether that's Anthony Bourdain back from the dead or whatever, yeah, was sitting down and you had to feed this person. Oh man, what's your go to like i know i can fucking kill this and they're gonna like it um i'm a big on just like fresh seafood in those situations i think like obviously like my thing is um trying to do something local so like i would probably just start like the market and see what i could find and a good piece of fish um preferably a grill if i had access to it i think using using fire on things uh, come on I want you to eat more than that yeah it's like <laughs> come on I get it but you want like the actual yeah, dish yeah no like I'm gonna do this sauce because I know this is fucking good um it's funny but I really don't like I don't do that no no like, like I don't have the go to I don't have like a go to no like, just kind of counting on the ingredients that yeah are honestly like I am like it. if that's like um trust in the skills yeah I think so trust, trust, trust in the product as much as anything yeah, you know my sure. skills are like hopefully probably don't hold a candle to the product sometimes <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, you are best. Um, good no, you good good I think I have some decent skills as well, you know, but like, yeah. I think honestly, just um, like this time of year, it would probably be like, you know, I'm trying to find like morels are coming in, so they're going to be delicious. Uh, I'm not afraid to use some butter for sure, even with fish, you know. Um, spring salmon season in, in Oregon, so probably getting salmon. It's also halibut season, so can't go wrong there, you know. Sounds like a smorgasbord of fish. Um, and it's like, this is a great season for it because everything's kind of turning over. We'll be seeing like, peas soon enough and mm-hmm. delicious radishes all this good stuff is coming on so um I yeah i don't it's funny i really don't have a go-to like sauce or or individual dish you know maybe i should but i don't know just something yeah. you're proud of or whatever that yeah that... yeah that's i don't know that's my thing this yeah. is like pick something Roll to go with i get it. to yeah i can attest to that when we got all the donation stuff we would just walk into the the walk-in and he'd stand there with a clipboard and be like ah, i'm okay for dinner and for lunch and then the menu comes out See, well and it's funny though too i should say because like people always ask my wife obviously like oh my gosh like he must just like cook the most amazing meals you know it's like i do occasionally cook dinner but she cooks a lot of dinners too you know and a big piece of that i think is honestly like the logistics of it sometimes like a lot of times the last thing I want to do is, like, plan when I get home because I feel like that's what so much of my week is. Like, Planning at this point, dinner is, like, the hardest part. Well, the shopping for it and all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, even yeah. though now, honestly, I don't spend really that much time in the kitchen at work. I'm doing a lot of back-end stuff and just, like, office work and front-of-the-house things at this point. Um, but it's still just a lot of, like, organizing things. So sometimes sure. just, like, making a list for the grocery store seems so hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Well, on right. the podcast, we always do a top five. Okay. Or a top several. Okay. Tonight's going to be a top several. Uh, one of the yeah. things that top I spots. love about Reddick is cocktails. Okay. Uh, the bar scene is probably the best in Newburgh, in, in my opinion. I appreciate um, that, yeah. I've, I've consumed a lot of alcohol at your bar <laughs> in my time. It is four blocks away from my house, so I can just stumble home. Yeah, yeah you can make it home in most, most shape. Really nice. We would never um, let you stumble out. But we're so tonight the the list. Well, it's only if I'm outside. I can sneak away before <laughs> they know I'm inebriated. Uh, is our top places for cocktails? So okay. Obviously, you guys are spearheading the list. Okay. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Allison. I love the Allison Bar. I think the Allison like great cocktails yeah. and a great little bar. Like, honestly, oh, I've yeah. only ever only been to the bar at the Allison. I've yeah. never actually had dinner in the dining room. You know, mm. So. For my influencer uh, IG p- profile, I just go to the Allison and take pictures there and like <laughs> look so legit. Yeah, like, I'll just like walk up to somebody really rich and like make it look like I'm friends with them. Yeah, and then you start by it's the work. ballet line and take th- pictures with a Lambo and be like, oh, yeah, 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 hard work pays off. That's how I get. Th- that's how I get those shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I love. Oh, that's why I love the Allison fine. too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I have a blue check mark. Super solid. They got a nice list of scotch and stuff like that too, like and yeah. dessert wines and you know, so it's not. Just cocktails. Good ambiance. Yeah. If you want to take somebody like yeah. like take somewhere or somebody somewhere nice. Even my Allison's wife likes to go. Beautiful place. Yeah. To the Allison Bar. Wow. I know. Well, one she of my like to go. I thought like, like, they're still around, but Thistle was one of my yes. favorite places <laughs> for <laughs> cocktails. Yeah. yeah. So this was on my list. Okay. Thistle and Mac. What was, kidding, what's man, the name I of that the people. bartender? I feel terrible. I should know this. I want to say it was like a Steve. Steven? Maybe. At this one. He's the only bartender south of Portland that I've ever been able to say like I'm in this mood. And he comes out with the perfect cocktail. Yeah, they have killer cocktails. Yeah, absolutely. Thistle, Thistle, we're, we're, not open yet. We're waiting for them yeah. to reopen. Good spot. Very good. Cool. Really, really good. good dinners there. Yeah, and great cocktails. Um, my good friend Sam Saxon still has a few cocktails on the old trellis list, although he's not. I don't think he's still the there trellis. anymore. But he's on the list, but the Samuel. Is he not guest? Ian, Ian <laughs> is he still there? Sometimes. <laughs> oh, he's yeah. part. Okay, so he's there. The Samuel. Samuel uh, <laughs> is one of my favorites at one of the, at the old trellis. In the world. Um, Earth and Sea had a decent cocktail list. Absolutely. It was pretty small. I loved yeah, it. Yeah, they were good. And it was, yeah, it was good. And again, yeah, this is kind of like a foo foo list. <laughs> this is more, <laughs> right, more of good. a foo foo list. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, not, for sure. Not like, this is not the dive bar list, you know. Yeah, no, it was this fancy, craft, craft fancy cocktails. cocktails. Craft cocktails. That's yeah. a nice whiskey sour there. Yeah. Um, did you mention Conservatory? I was I was about to mention I've actually not been there but I'm just watching what they do on like yeah. social media it looks really cool and interesting you know yeah and I think it looks delicious but I haven't actually made it there yet mm-hmm. so. yeah we're gonna have to check that out we've just again it was recommended to us by Sam who knows his shit he gets around yeah. and drinks a lot of alcohol in the valley yeah yeah over McMin- <laughs> and it's on First Street in McMinnville oh it's like two streets down. what what is yeah, this why would you, yeah, what's on what's first? no wonder I haven't <laughs> interesting strategy been there. We'll see off for <laughs> yeah. and, and maybe we should we have one of these days we should do downtown like downtown on first street is what they're doing. <laughs> and it's yeah, gonna move over. at some point yeah we should have like a top bartender list but first street didn't have great cocktails but tommy was an incredible so like, bartender. It's, i mean that kind of bartending is like it's its own skill set right. right like they have so much to deal with beyond You're just, just <laughs> like slinging drinks to yeah. people like i can't even yeah. imagine you know yeah, yeah. Like, Sally, and Sally, Sally place has like lottery to deal with and pool tables and just like you know dive bar attitude man it's like so a counselor, it's its own kind of skill yeah. but yeah. they always took care of industry folks because we'd always get off you know an hour or so before they close stumble yeah. over at 1 one fifteen. yeah and tommy and sally would hook it up yeah those gin and tonics tommy. man they would, <laughs> they would put you on your ass mostly Cold. gin uh, <laughs> not much splash. Ice. mostly gin yeah yeah they the, Bartenders have to keep coal from getting into fist fights. Like it's a hard job. Like, Dude, that was a long time ago. We've <laughs> yeah. seen we've seen some growth. Thank you, Wesley. I think I've <laughs> probably you, Wesley. I've probably been in more God, recent. I feel so my like, ego is just fisticuffs at st- First Street than you have recently. Oh no. <laughs> well, coal yeah. hasn't beaten up very many people at bars like in the last two months. <laughs> like it's been really good. You're on the, you're on the street. <laughs> This is all lies. I have never seen Cole beat up anybody at a bar, say, just wait, so you know. Wait, wait, so wait, so Thank you. <laughs> he's the guy you want to take to a he bar with you, no though, because no one's going to fuck with you <laughs> when Cole walks in with his neck. <laughs> next uh, next uh, topic <laughs> next is the West Coast uh, Wine Update. West Coast Wine Update. Yeah. Okay, We're so canning soon. We're, gonna, We're making wine. We're making wine. We're making wine. Yep, this is exciting. Yeah. Yep, our boss... Chris Berg, who is the keeper of the wine right now, uh, is telling us that we're going to be canning soon, and we need to get our shit together. He's going to help us. 
Uh, but we've we've got to decide on the label. And I'll put up the mo- look, a couple of the images. I think I put it up before that I really like the kind of Reservoir Dogs y suits mm-hmm. kind of looking thing. Yeah. But we kind of have to decide, like, okay, so are we just calling this West Co Wine Sparkling Rose? Are we calling it? Where did can do? do I just come made from? that up. I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I hate that do. one, by the way. Uh, <laughs> All righty, can do. folks. Can do. I like we Three Brutes, do. which was, uh, I'm going to give credit to Chess Allen on this one. Three Brutes. Chester with, Allen. Three Brutes Rosé. Okay. It's a, it's a good name. I, I like the name. My it's wife. super good. My wife hates it. Megan. So that's, yeah. like a, that's just not going to happen. <gasps> it's just, <gasps> sorry, Controversy Chester. is I, great. I love it, but. It's oh. so good. Chester, if you have any more names. Dude, oh, check the text <laughs> next, that next one was Tuesday afternoon. Really? No, but we just have to, like, are we going to, like, name it some clever name? Or are we just going to be like... Yeah, we're going to name it a clever name, like Three Brutes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. Uh, for all 60... We have 60 cases. Or less than that. <laughs> yeah, we're, like, we're, 45 cases? Yeah, the ish of... We got, we're going to sell... We're moving a lot of product out of this. Oh, um, man, so much. So we're going to get filthy rich in the process. Well, you we've also been farming... We've also valley. been farming this vineyard all... <laughs> This last all spring in order to get it to produce a little bit more fruit, so we yeah. can have more than sixty oh, cases. Yeah. Won't be full, but try so this. And the, it, mildew yeah. and starting. You guys have been no. doing all the all the. the, yeah. the We've been pruning well. it, and we're yes. Yeah. Look at my hands. We're uh, I'm starting to get farmer hands. We're getting I'm this, very excited. We're getting this, this thing ready. There you go. So the yeah. idea is to get this Take place up and off. up and running, yeah. and actually <laughs> produce some decent my, amount of wine. Yeah, I think it'll. I think I'm. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about. We've made progress. Like, yeah. I can't wait to see these vines just pop, Ugh. you know, and just all the work and the twigs like and my, everything. You, they feel like our babies now. Like, you're out there, and when I, I used to come to one of these plants that has, like, a million little uh, shoots coming out of it, and it's just, like, out of control after years of never being pruned. Right. And I was like, fuck, like... This is just so much work. Now, as I'm trimming them back, I'm like, oh my god, this has so much potential. How can I channel your inner life? Because <laughs> there's so much, yeah, yeah. there's so much energy in that yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. producing all uh, this, these shoots. Yeah. You trim all those shoots off, and you get some really good fruit off of some of those. Yeah. You know, so it's cool to see. Like, I mean, it wants to grow, right? I mean, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we were talking to somebody in the industry, that old shoot, Ian was, who's super stoked about our project and thinks that. We have every chance to make like a high quality Pinot Noir off of this vineyard because he knew it. He knew that they were old vines and the he knew the area. And because this is, you know, this is a perfect road. Calkins Lane is like legendary. Yeah. So I we're we're crossing our fingers. You so know, Domain so. Serene, just watch. We're out. coming for you. We got yeah. it, baby. I'm getting my <laughs> 918. Bo- Bollinger. I'm gonna say our place is Bollinger, nicer. Bollinger, if you want to but... come, you want to come buy us out. Yeah. You let me know. <laughs> 15 mil on the authenticity, table. And I'll take the... Authenticity, like here, is nothing like the main <laughs> yeah. stream. So. Oh, boy. All right, All right 60 <laughs> seconds. Let's sports do our minute. Sports minute. Go, go, go. Fast. Uh, you're the Blazers fan, Lamarcus. Lamarcus retired. Oh, heart issue. He had heart palpitations. He's always Irre- had heart Irregular today. heart beat. Yeah. Called it. Man. <laughs> I'm I hope just, I hope that I'm if just the, thankful the Nets have one if, less yeah, superstar if, on their if, team. If Brooklyn wins, they still give him a ring. Fuck Brooklyn. Like, yeah, because he played I mean, like seven or eight games at least. Right. If he wears so a jersey, so he deserves a ring. That's his. That's his ring. Yeah. No. He, wasn't he can't get a anywhere ring. else. He can't get a ring. Um, if you play one quarter of a football game in a sixteen-game season, you don't get a Super Bowl ring when that team wins the playoffs. Actually, I think you do. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just uh, okay. Softball, softball pitcher, college softball that? pitcher. Yeah, she struck everybody out. Seven innings. Straight. Wow, those just girls struck are out horrible straight. at hitting. Not it's, even no hitter. Yeah. Just, just struck out everybody. Struck out. Just struck out everybody. Which is, I mean, okay. I, I dated a, a softball pitcher who had a better college career Big than neck. I ended up did, and uh, we had this ongoing thing. Like, I bet I could strike Ooh. you out. No, I bet I could strike you out. She threw a rising ball. Yeah. I'd never seen anything move. Like, a ball in baseball doesn't go up. It doesn't. Not when Needless to say, I, I never touched the ball. A submarine pitcher. <laughs> I tucked my but... tail between my legs and walked off the field. There was. Yeah. No, exactly. I mean, obviously, the obviously their team had to have been horrible. Well, but she was just incredible. Still, just to strike out. Strike out. Not like put outs. It's impressive. She just blew them all away. That, impressive. That's impressive. Anyway, okay, moving on. And the last one, uh, we have our first Japanese Masters champion, which I find <clears> interesting. <throat> yeah. Did you see the little, the little clip of the the caddy who bowed to the field, to the course at, yeah. before taking off? Yeah. It's just kind of a cool little a cool little yeah, beautiful awesome. little sports moment. Little yeah. little fresh blood Absolutely. and 
in the Georgia needed that. world of golf. In a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> in a so. year where we've needed sports to bring us all back together again. <laughs> yes, right. is, uh, exactly. Well, guys, that was an amazing sports minute, so uh, well we, done. And we did it in record time. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Our yeah. We didn't minute ramble on. Like minute. Because we didn't have any UFC stuff to talk about. Don't for. ruin it now. Just move on. All right, yeah. move on. Move on. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> and brutal. Thank you. All right, uh, what's brutal? Brutal. For speaking brutal. Of brutal. <laughs> uh, spring allergies. Amen, dude. Don't look at me. It might so mine sprung that into bad. a full-fledged eye infection a week ago. I couldn't see out of one eye. It totally swelled shut. Oh. So, yeah. Allergies, yeah, real this year. Allergies. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's not even <laughs> June yet. Well, right? I look like Rocky. You know, like Nick yeah. was just sending me memes like, "Cut me." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like trying to acclimate over in my 34th year naturally, and just trying to see if no Claritin mm-hmm. or anything works. And so you far, just trying to go to the bee lady down so far, the road. Does she still have the bee? The Dude, bee? I've been eating honey. I'm not disciplined enough for that, Paul. Man, that honey. Dude, but amazing. a spoonful of honey is so tasty. I, it is, and I'm just like. When That's also do, the best it. honey but, in the valley. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not. I just acupuncture. Yeah, helps when I'm my, when my allergies get bad. I go to the acupuncturist, and I just drain. Chapters really actually now has an a placebo, of allergy placebo tea. effect works, oh. guys. There you go. <laughs> so I'll take that placebo if it helps. There you go. I'm wow. not dribbling into my mask. Acupuncture is shown to do a lot. No. Beautiful. We uh, true, mentioned true. Bollinger. Uh, um, the offer's on the table if you want to buy our our wine brand. Um, but they already bought Ponzi. I did not know this. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Yep. So that's pretty cool. A, a massive champagne house. A massive champagne house coming yep. into the valley. Um, and, and it's it, cool. It, it re- reminded me of uh, Jim Bruno talking earlier in the year about how he thinks this valley is going to be the premier destination for growing sparkling yeah. wine in the world in the next 10 to 15 years. Yeah. yeah. And we're starting to see that nod. Well, we're Champagne's saying, weather sucks, so it helps that we have better weather. and it's just We don't have late just, freezes. We don't, we don't, we don't have, have hail. history, so it's taking time. It's going to take 100 years to catch up to what Champagne's done. But people have known Oregon's on the way for like a little while now, right? I mean, right. Yeah. even before, when we were moving out here in yeah, 2008, I remember going to visit my in-laws in California and going to um, like Los Olivos and yeah. somebody there was like, oh, you're moving to Oregon. He's like, just buy the wine now because, you know, 10 years, you know, it's all going to be like through the roof, you know. Yeah. And it's not quite gotten there, I guess, but it's, I mean, some of the wines are it's on its way. It's up there. But yeah, for sure, so. It's getting there. Yeah, but I mean, it's a Ponzi family. It's been around a long time. I mean, they just much celebrated the 50 years. And that's, for me, that's like a good for you. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, I, you've, I agree. you've worked, you've the built this brand. The parents handed it off to the girls. Yeah. And and they've done what they wanted with it. They, yeah. you know, this was an awesome opportunity for them. Well, yeah. and, they, and it's it's the same thing that happened when a bunch of places were purchased by Jackson family. Some people were all up in arms about it. Like, oh, this, you know, corporate. Going to ruin everything. Yeah, going to come like, in. But it, it, to me, it's um, indicative of success of the Valley to see that these big international companies are coming in and saying we show interest in Oregon right. and it's only going to help the Reddick wo- Reddick Woods and the Allisons and all the other businesses in, in town that we've talked about tonight and just we always talk about um well it's it's shocking so i mean how few Oregon wines make it across the country yeah we still and only so, produce three percent of the country's wine yeah, it, yeah into bottle shops and everything and and so the these big companies coming in and buying you're you're what we're getting is their distribution channels not that everybody's going to take advantage of that but i think you're going to see more of these wines more of the oregon wines kind of getting out there and it's going to you know I mean, you well, rising especially especially with portland, you can go to a portland restaurant and be like there are you know five or six california pinots on here and like one you right. know erath like very basic blend right oh yeah and it's like what the hell but that's part of this that changes that is that these California has much more corporations, much more success, oh, yeah. much more credit, and so this is this gives credit to Oregon. Well, and opinion. to to Jackson's credit, they acquired the wineries and really left them in yeah, operation the, the way yeah, that they absolutely. were. They just added that distribution channel and a little bit of things like healthcare and, right. and retirement plans. <laughs> exactly. And, you know? yeah. Exactly. So yeah, as long as you for, come and you're Ponzi. a good neighbor, if you come and you're yeah. not a good neighbor. We'll ride you out of town on the horse you came in with. <laughs> you're right. If you come, oh, you're, yeah. you're a good neighbor. We, like, we've <laughs> talked shit about a certain California winery coming up, and we do not like them, and I'm not bringing people to them. And that's a, that's a good example of right. how not to do it. Right. And, you know, hopefully they change their tune, but, you know, we'll call them out every time. There's two tour to companies me. that aren't. Silver Oak, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Get your shit together. Anyway. Um, all right. Paul, thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. man. Good hanging out with you at the venue. Nice thanks a lot. Well. Looking yeah. forward to 
getting back out on beautiful, that deck. And... Beautiful day to be out here. Oh my gosh! I, God, I this... thought for sure I was going to have to go running. If and the my camera could see the sunset, but, it is yep, gorgeous. We got a silhouette with a little orange. Yep, beautiful. Ian's Saw. dancing like right in between those two oak trees. He's right there. running nude through it's the super vineyard. hot. <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful things. Ooh, it's Run thing. it! What was that? There's a <laughs> Damn, I've never seen that move before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm. All right. If you enjoyed oh, this man. and anything else, uh, please uh, like, subscribe, share, follow Ruddick Wood on social Check media. Check out yeah. Wood. Yep, on social media. Please. And then go actually visit them in person. <laughs> yeah. And then follow <laughs> them. Yes. And then go and then buy some ups. Yeah, yeah, come great come great. see us when yeah. they're in the area. Yeah. And hey, yeah. do us a favor. Donate to the Patreon. Become a recurring Patreon contributor or whatever and we will thank you and but also we're going to have some probably some exclusive content and other more other stuff coming along that will be just for you so check it out we'll be there'll be a link in the description yeah all right we will see you next week adios okay Okay. cheers all right let's walk this in here brother so a little bit of light yeah man it's beautiful got another like two-thirds of the one of the another one of the short rows done you did? I got one of the long rows right. today. We were done with them. I mean, there's the, like, slightly shorter rows. Okay, that's the one. Well, I was These doing... These ones are fucking forever we have, on the other side of the back. We have three more. Yeah. So we have...